This week, I'm sitting down with Lucasfilm Animation producer Athena Portillo. Plus, Pablo gets to spend some quality one-on-one -on -one time with Therm Scissor Punch. Are you going to be okay with that? I'm not jealous because Pablo is a friend, and I'm very happy for him when good things happen for him. Wow. I almost believe that. This is the Star Wars Show. From the Lucasfilm headquarters in San Francisco, here's your hosts, Andy and Anthony. Hello and welcome to the Star Wars show, an internet show that should never ever actually be confused with a real Star Wars show. See, those have budgets, actors and special effects. We have the two of us, a camera, and barely a nickel to our name. But at least we have the Star Wars in the name of the show. <laughs> Did you say the Star the Wars? The Star Wars. Say, Andy, do you like bonus features on the home releases of your favorite films? Do I ever? Do you also like hanging out with me and showing some of those bonus features to people on Facebook? Why, yes. Yes, I do. Oh, <laughs> well, then you will love it when the two of us host the solo A Star Wars Story bonus showcase tomorrow at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 Pacific on Facebook. But will there be guests? Ha! Will there be guests? Of course there will be guests. Like who? Well, to start off, we're going to be co-hosting with the co-writer of Solo, John Kasdan. That's a lot of co's. Some would say it's a cooperative effort. We'll also be joined by Ray Park and Chewbacca. Together, we'll look at behind the scenes features, talent interviews, and deleted scenes that are included in the bonus content of Solo, A Star Wars Story. Available on digital now and Blu-ray September 25th. For more details on the bonus showcase, check out facebook.com slash Star Wars. And while we're talking about behind the scenes solo content, one feature that you won't find on the home release is Pablo Hidalgo going behind the scenes with the aliens from Solo to find out how they're digitally scanned by our friends at Gentle Giant. Makers of the almost completely sold out Star Wars show statuette available at this link. Hurry before they're all gone. Nice plug. I do my best. Anyway, here's Pablo with the last, and in my opinion, the best behind the scenes featuring my favorite handsome lobster son, Therm Scissor Punch. <sighs> I love the Therm Scissor Punch. I know. But then enjoy. You, you should open your eyes to watch it though. No, I'm just letting the Therm wash over me. It's gross. Hey everyone, I'm here in Shed 32 at Pinewood Studios, and in this shed is all sorts of special photography that's done to get you images of characters, props, and all sorts of interesting stuff from the movie. I'm here with Henry, and I can't help but notice, but I'm surrounded by cameras. We're standing in General Giant's 3D scanner. This is one of the largest photogrammetry systems that we've built. In this rig, there's 185 cameras. We're covering all the angles as much as possible, and we run this through some software to create a 3D model. The creatures in Star Wars, they all come in different various sizes, down to small droids to very large creatures. So we had to build a system that could accommodate all of those, plus Chewbacca. If we can scan Chewbacca, we can scan anything. Joining me right now is Dave from The Creature Shop, and I know you've helped create, bring to life some beloved characters. Yeah, there's loads now, that's the thing. The Porgs in Episode 8, I operate the head of BB-8. In this movie, there's about 10 things that have got me somewhere underneath or behind or inside, but there's kind of a team of five of us who are here all the time who look after everything. It's lovely that you get different thing all the time. How many people would it take to operate Big Guy over here? Big Guy was three people, I think. He's got sort of a left and right, and he bends over the Savak table, and he has eyeball stuff going on, and blink, and brow, and all that. Most of the big characters require upwards of two or three people each. You look at the scene, and there'll be five characters in it, and there's probably 25 people yeah. underneath the table, or hiding, or in greens, to make everything work. Because every time an arm moves or an eye blinks, somebody's on the end of that. Obviously, you can't have have a one-man band. Like if you did have a shot in the movie where you tilt it under the table, you would just see bodies and like this, you know, like that, because you all get in very tight. You can't be uh, worried about personal space. Athena Portillo came all the way upstairs from Lucasfilm Animation to join us this week. <laughs> so you are right now working on Resistance, we can't really talk about it that much, but you're executive producing the show, which is a new role for you. Can you tell me a little bit about that experience? It's been awesome so far. We actually started back in 2016, and it's really great to say that we're airing on October 7th on the Disney Channel, so I'm really excited about that. And having to work with Justin Ridge, who's our supervising director, and Brandon Alman, our head writer, is awesome. Yeah. So you've been working with Lucasfilm Animation for a while now. You've worked on all of our major animated series, starting with The Clone Wars. I want to start with how you came to work in Lucasfilm Animation, because that's not your role when you started here. So my path was actually journalism, with an emphasis in magazine writing. And there was an internship posting at college that basically said, try out writing for a Star Wars newsletter. I lucked out. I got the internship. 
But while I was doing all this, I was being exposed to product development. I took that role and it was for episode one. And then within that time frame, I would volunteer. ILM was working on the Star Wars special editions and they were doing some reshoots. And then I fell in love with visual effects. So from licensing, I went to ILM. I did visual effects for six years. And then I came back around to animation. And every so often, the guy in the hat would come around my office and he was like, are you the one with the Jedi 96 license plate? I'm like, yeah, he goes, you should be working on Star Wars. I mean, obviously that's your passion. I'm like, I would love that. And I moved on to Clone Wars and I've been part of Lucasfilm Animation ever since. That's a wild trip. I mean, mm -hmm. that is such a strange and unique path. Mm -hmm. A lot of people always ask me like, oh, how do I get a job at Lucasfilm? Where did you go? And I'm like, you really just have to find your own way. And that is like the most find your own way story that I've ever heard. Yeah. So let's talk about your career growth. You brought a bunch <laughs> of memories here with you because you've been here for a while. I found my exception letter to my internship. This was in December 19th, 1995. Wow. I was able to go to the MTV Movie Awards and interview Peter Mayhew. And I think there's actually a picture of us in here that we took. <laughs> that is really funny. I got the cover story for Wampa Attack. That's awesome. So I thought that was great. This is when we had achieved our first 100 episodes of Clone Wars. So there was like a little gift pack that they gave us and I kept it because it was very memorable. This one is my favorite. This is when MTV came to Skywalker Ranch to screen episode one to a lot of celebrities. And so I I was in charge of giving tours. So I remember giving a tour to Limp Biscuit and Corn, Seth Green, Elijah Wood, the cast of 90210, which was really interesting. So that was a lot of fun. One of my favorite characters in Rebels was named after you, AP5. Usually in our writers' conferences, we have so much fun because everyone's just feeling so comfortable. And of course, by the end of the day, everyone's like poking fun at each other. The way they were describing the droid was, the droid, you know, it's about statistics. It's about stats all the time. Very serious, getting things done. And Floyd makes fun of me because whenever we talk about schedule, I'm like, oh yeah, totally, that's gonna happen on 927, and then the week after that is 10-4, and very yeah. much like that. So he's like, I think we're just called AP, AP5. It's like, what's the five for? You're five feet tall, you know? So it's like AP5. <laughs> Working as a producer on these shows, you do a lot of work that's completely behind the scenes. How has that changed how you consume Star Wars? I guess because I'm a Star Wars fan, even though I work on it, I never get tired of it. So when Clone Wars and Rebels were airing, I made sure I would tune in all the time. And I do unfortunately think of it in a lens of the amount of work that was put into <laughs> it in terms of those character count tracking documents. If we were within asset parameters, the writer's conference, the script phase, but I could also still have fun watching it because mm -hmm. it feels like a great accomplishment with everybody that worked on it. It's like that Drake song, right? It's like started from the bottom, now we're here. <laughs> started from the bottom, now the whole team here. <laughs> It's true. It's like the whole team is what it takes to do all of this, you know? You're amazing. Thank you so <laughs> much for that. Today we're here at Lucasfilm shooting the Han Sandwiches Star Wars cookbook. We have about six different scenes that we were photographing and they all turned out really great. What seems like a very simple set where it's like just a couple of action figures and a sandwich, it actually takes a lot longer than you might think. It requires just the right lights, everything at the right angle and the right proportion. It's fun to work on a project with the subject matter that you grew up loving. It was just a really good chance of a lifetime basically to do this. I think I would recommend this cookbook because it's a subject matter that most people do love. The figures and characters that you know come along with fun recipes that you can make for your family, your friends, and kind of show off your Star Wars love. Yes. Watching the Star Wars show. Last week we asked what your favorite Star Wars buddy buddy goof off moments were, and y'all had some opinions. Erica said she loved Chopper and R2's reactions to meeting each other, while Sam Lillo said Cassian and K2 being the best rebel spies. Lots of deleted scenes mm -hmm. mentioned as well, like Tyler citing the elevator scene from Revenge of the Sith, James with the Han, Chewie, and Finn moment from The Force Awakens, and the Finn elevator scene from The Last Jedi. Thanks to everyone who submitted this week. And as always, remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, follow us on Twitter. Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, download the Star Wars app, and help control the pet population. Have your pet spayed or neutered. Thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you. I'm very good at guessing the prices of canned vegetables, so <laughs> like, I feel like I would do pretty well. I can sort of do a puppet. Andy. Just keep going, just keep going. News! You gotta follow through. Mm -hmm. You follow, follow through. through. So what do we wanna do here? Let's just, just do, do it. it.